Okay. Hi, everyone. Ooh. Welcome to today's live stream. Okay, it seems to work on mine. Okay, I think we're good then. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Von Art, and welcome to today's YouTube stream. I keep wanting to say the weekly Wednesday one, but I do now do my weekly Wednesday live streams every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central Time. I'm bringing it back. I used to do this, and I did it for six years. I took a break when I turned 30, but now I'm ready to jump back into it because of the quarantine and what's happening. So what better time to kind of pass the time with friends and do art along the way and maybe learn something or two. Oh, good. So no echo for you guys either. Good, good. Uh, if you could put where you're watching from, I always like to start these streams by giving a shout out and then I will go ahead and jump into this. Well, that's right. And then as I also start every stream, I've been lighting this candle. It's called a citrine quartz crystal candle. And essentially there is citrine somewhere in this candle, but I didn't want to um, just burn it all the way through, I wanted to only burn the candle when I'm live, and that way it's more of a goal to work towards. Okay, I'm going to rip off. The... Once again, I'm going to get my little handy wick clippers. <laughs> Once again, most one of the most bougie things I've ever bought. Okay. You know what? I'm going to light I'm gonna light this candle too. Get this room full of aroma. All right, here we go. Oh, don't burn out on me already. There we go. So hello, hello everyone. How's everyone's Friday treating them? I don't know about you guys, but I know me and Josh, we got Animal Crossing last night and we had a very late night playing it. Uh, I think we went to bed at 4 a.m. It was like a really, really late night back behind me. Oh yes, uh, we also have a wonderful Discord community that you can join below. I will always post what streams I will be doing and we share a lot of art, share critiques, movies, films, music, things of that nature, just a general good art community and right now there is an emoji contest going on the server and if one of the winners will actually be one of the new emojis here for our YouTube members. Speaking of, uh, I'm getting used to doing YouTube live instead of Twitch, and there are memberships on YouTube now. So if you want to give me $2, you get access to all the custom emojis that I have available, which I will share with you guys in the chat so you can see what they look like. But uh, I really like that YouTube makes it $2, like you can set your own tier. Where on Twitch it was $5, and I was like, ah, that's, that's a little steep for just custom emojis, but $2 seems reasonable. And then uh, there are also, there's a donation. Let me put the link below as well on that because I am going to be saving up for a, where is that? For a planter box and then I'm gonna buy a bunch of seeds that you guys suggest. That's what the donation goal is currently. We had one on Wednesday, but it already hit the goal and it is an Astrid the Cat window lounger. So it's already, well, who knows with the shipping right now, but it's in, it's ordered. Uh, so we should be getting that in the next week, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, I'm hoping to get the planner box so that I can do a live stream on it. And I'll show you guys how to grow your own food. <laughs> because we might have to. I really hope that doesn't become the case, but you never know. You never know. I'm going to copy that link. So I'm going to paste it in the description. Yes. Oh, and today's tea, because I always like to say what tea I'm drinking, is Snickerdoodle. We've been drinking a lot of like anti-cold and uh, kind of the more, I guess, what would be healthy teas. Uh, but you know what? I was like, it's Friday. Animal Crossing came out. I'm ready to have some fun. And actually, doing the King of Hearts is something that I've been wanting to do all week. So I'm, I'm kind of excited to jump into it. So I chose a fun tea for today. Uh, let me put the donation link in the description. And of course, I will always give any shout out to any donation or membership. 
it's one of those weird promo things where you got to talk about it on your stream, even though it's a little uncomfortable because it sounds like just same shameless self-promotion, but you got to do what we got to do during these times. Okay, I think we're all good. Good, I'm set. So let's go ahead and do these shout outs and then I'll go ahead and explain what today's stream is all about. We got Danny from Texas, hello. Carlo from Croatia, Books from Italy, Betty from Alaska, Sydney from Utah, hello, hello. Azur from Locked in My House because of Corona, so trying to find for sure something so I don't get too bored. Well, I hope that this will cure a little bit of that boredness. Anna from the Philippines, hello, hello. I never get to catch your streams live because of the time difference. I replay your old CG Cookie streams often while working because listening to you is inspiring. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you got to come to one live. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Corey, hey, Corey, one of our wonderful mods on the Discord. He just picked up Animal Crossing about two hours ago. Oh, Corey, I can't wait till we get to play together. I'm actually going to be doing a stream tomorrow on my boyfriend's YouTube channel. It's Schwa Plays Games. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to go visit his town. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to be doing, but I'm excited because Animal Crossing, uh, it's, it's pretty great. It's pretty good, especially during these times right now. Um, Amy, hey Amy. Alice and I are reporting in from Chicago because we can't leave. Well, welcome, welcome. Um, Books is asking, what's the story behind each emoji? I will get to that in just one second because, yeah, they are kind of strange at first look. Uh, do, do, do. Amy says, are you casting Mage Hand again this stream? <laughs> no, look, it looks like it's in real time. Uh, my third hand, because I definitely don't have one, will not be making an appearance today. Uh, we got Demi from Poland, Psycho Candy. Uh, from New York City. Matthias? Why can't I say it? Matthias from Brazil. Hello, hello. Um, Azur from France. Well, hello, hello, everyone. Um, so I guess really quick, the emojis, the six of them, you can kind of see them. So the first one's Astrid the cat. It is Josh's cat, but I've kind of adopted it as my stepchild. And Astrid is, always kind of gives this blank face. And uh, that's how I respond to things sometimes. When I don't want to respond, I just give the Astrid face. The golden fridge is because I never, or you know what, I'll do them one by a time. So that's Astrid the cat. And then the golden fridge is representative of, I was never, my own art was never put on the fridge as a kid. Uh, my parents never put my art on the fridge. And all, all through grade school, high school, I mean, <laughs> I would hope in college I don't need to be on my parents' fridge as like validation. But uh, I made a golden fridge so that I, I literally physically made a magnetic golden fridge, and then since I used to live stream all the time, I had people send me magnets of their art so that they could be put on a fridge. That way, uh, it <laughs> makes, makes it so that no one feels left out uh, in fridgeless, or that their art is fridgeless. So that is that one. The third one was done by one of our wonderful community members, and it's me saying hello. The golden shovel is basically uh, a, kind of a... Um, what's that called? A metaphor to dig deeper. I, I could do a stream on this eventually again too, but it was talking about how uh, I think as artists sometimes we only do the surface level of digging and we get surface level results. And unfortunately sometimes in this modern age of social media, uh, surface level art can get the best response. So just like pretty girl in profile. And uh, it's not my favorite type of work, and I always challenge artists to dig deeper. So that's what the golden shovel represents. I mean, there's a little bit more to it. I, I say that there's a bronze, silver, and a gold shovel, but that's kind of the gist of it. Uh, the tea emoji, because I always drink tea on the stream, speaking of which, I'm going to pour myself a glass here. It also not only helps me calm down, but it gives me a chance to breathe, because I tend to ramble. If you've been on my streams before, I can go a mile a minute. I can just keep going. And that's why I have the tea emoji. And the last one is actually one of the newer ones. It's a ringing bell. It's specifically this one. I'm going to be hanging this at some point. And then every time I get a new member or someone donates, I do a quick slap of the bell. So <laughs> those are the six emojis currently. And Eric, hey, from Denmark. Hello, hello. Okay, I'm going to just jump into this because I'm excited to start drawing, and I feel like I've done enough chatting as is. So, uh, hello everyone. 
Today I'm going to be talking and drawing the King of Hearts, but not only that, I'm going to be kind of talking about the process of making a card deck. So let me first show you guys the six that I already have done. So the Jack of Hearts was my very first one, and this one kind of set the precedent for the others. And I'll talk about why I've been frustrated with doing the cards and where I've been hitting some setbacks, because a lot of this it requires a lot of pre-planning. Oh, and by the way, uh, if you have any comments or questions for me during the stream, please put at Von Art. That way it's easier for me to look at the comments and then back at the drawing, because I'll, I'll be looking for that little highlight. Uh, and that way the stream can keep going. Uh, Eric says, did you check out Auto Frello? I did not yet. Honestly, last night was just a mix of Animal Crossing for straight hours. I did literally nothing else. But I will. I have it written down. You can see I still have it written down. <laughs> uh, bombs away. <laughs> uh, you ramble. Total news. Oh, hey, Cat Nor, another one of our mods. Just kidding. I love your rambling. Well, thank you. Uh, so why do I feel like I've gotten kind of stuck with the cards? Because... I feel that I wanted to have the entire deck done by mid-April. I wanted to have a Kickstarter because we had this entire exterior project of my roof and siding and gutters being replaced. It was this big financial project. I was like, okay, well, what's something I, I genuinely am interested in doing right now? And uh, late last year, I was taught how to play multiplayer solitaire. I've been obsessed with it ever since. I'll do a tutorial. One day I, I'll play against you guys or some somehow we'll make it work. But I love the game. And it requires just a normal 52 poker playing deck. And I wanted to make my own. And I wanted it to be a pencil deck. The thing that I think uh, struggled for me... Hey, well, thank you, Lucas Nieper, for subscribing. I feel like I could also do the bell for subscribers. It's kind of an obnoxious noise, though, so maybe not for <laughs> subscribers. Because oftentimes I, I get a few of those per stream, and I don't know if you want to be hearing cowbell every two minutes. But when I was in my pre-planning phase, I did a lot of research on where the cards came from. And apparently they originated most likely in Asia. It's not completely confirmed, but that's the research I found. And eventually it made its way into Europe. And actually for a little while, the four pips, which are the little icons, they used to be really cute things. There was like bells and acorns. Uh, I kind of almost, I was like that close to making a deck that featured those pips. But I figured it wouldn't be as accessible to people. So I thought maybe in the future I might make a... Um, uh, original. I think it was a German deck that that had the, the bells and the, the acorns. But then when France got it, France then added in the pips that we know and that we know today as the the poker pips, which are hearts, spades, diamonds, and clubs. So then I looked a little bit more further into like the history of each of them and what they represent. So here is Here's kind of an overview, because I don't want to be rambling too much before I actually get into drawing. But I feel like this is somewhat important. So apparently the cards represent the different stages in life. St bear with me. So apparently the hearts represent spring, or like the first quarter of your life. So everything is fresh, things are young, youthful. And I wanted to depict that in my heart cards. And you know what, I can actually show it in the queens, because I have all my queens done. So I wanted to show the, the suit of hearts to be very joyous, full of like budding flowers. I wanted there to be kind of the sensuality to them, um, a little softer. And I, I think that's why I'm going to have it be a little bit more bare, like a less clothing. Even with the, the king, it's just a very natural looking um, presence and outfit and wardrobe. And I wanted there to be kind of this uh, lushness to them. And that kind of represents the first quarter of your life, so things are young. But then moving into the next stage, we have doo -doo -doo, the clubs. Now, for the clubs, this apparently represented summer, and it represented the second quarter of your life. So imagine between, like, 25 and 40, or 21, 22, and 40. And these were supposed to represent when your uh, career has kind of taken off. You're enjoying the success of what you've done for the first or for what you've been building. There's education built in there. Uh, you're a bit wiser. So I wanted to represent the summer uh, suit with very like lush, uh, um, lush fruit, <laughs> but a lot of uh, not only just foliage like the hearts had, but these are more like buds and flowers. But I wanted there to be pure fruit because 
all you know fruit stem from flowers and i wanted there to be this sense of a uh, warmth and abundance so that was the the driving factor behind the suit of the clubs and i also wanted to do an entire family consisting of people of color so i wanted uh, my first one the queen to be a, a dark skinned female and i wanted there to be the sense of kind of joy between all the clubs that i'm going to be doing and then the next one is the diamond suit. So for my diamonds, uh, this is supposed to represent the fall of your life or the third quarter. So this is when you're like 40 to 60. Oh, you know what? I'm going to close my Discord. That way you don't hear the messages. There we go. And uh, what this represents is the wealth of your life. You're finally being able to enjoy the riches that you've amounted to in the first two quarters of your life, and now you get to just lavish in it. So obviously diamonds to me represents a luxury, and I wanted it to be represented by this very glamorous, almost gaudy amount of diamonds and jewelry and swirls and curls, and that's kind of the theme I'm going with for my diamond suit. Now the last one, uh, there's a lot of uh, theories with the spades, but the spades represent the winter of someone's life. So this is the the last quarter, and it represents, for me, what I'm going to be representing it is between like 60 and death, basically. And this basically, uh, I wanted to showcase in this very malice-driven, kind of evil family. And each of them are going to have these hidden agendas just laced in their face. And I wanted there to be some maliciousness to them. So my queen of spades is opening up this vial that is full of this, you know, toxic gas or whatever it might be. And I wanted her to look just kind of um, like instantly villainous. <laughs> and I'm, I want to do that for each of my, my spades. I think I do. Where's my, do I have my jack of spades here? Oh, I do. So my Jack of Spades, I, I actually finished this week, and he'll be posted probably actually tonight or tomorrow. And it's that same, similar, you know, there's malice behind it. Like, he's he's stabbing his own finger just to feel the pain of it. And I like the idea that all my Spade cards are going to be have this, like, instant, something's not right. So that's my, what I've been doing with my cards. But the problem is, I think I should have done more pre-planning on like elements that will be included for each of the three face cards for each suit. Because I feel that I jumped into it a little quickly with my Jack of Hearts, and I actually liked how this one turned out. But then as I started to just keep churning them out, I realized I should have put a little bit more pre-thought into them. I'm still proud of them, don't get me wrong, but I'm like 80% proud. I think I'm going to do some editing when they're all done to make them feel very cohesive and very much a collective of the same deck. So uh, that is my, my history of what I've been doing with my cards. And uh, I guess I should also explain why only half of them are drawn. They're like half bodies. And that's because I've been doing all of my digital work first in Procreate. Let me grab my iPad. I'll show you guys what it looks like on the iPad. Because the iPad has this brilliant feature that allows you to mirror and then flip the image while you're drawing. Let me see if I can find. Actually, I'll even give you, I'll show you guys a, a glimpse at the next one I'm working on. So this is how it looks. Uh, I think I don't have my Apple Pen in here, but basically if I were to draw on this area here, it would also draw on this area down here. So it's very, it's instant, and then you can see where the actual card will intersect with itself in the middle, and that way you can kind of create uh, the illusion that it's one image, but you only have to draw half of it, because essentially when this is ready for me to or at least when I feel like this is a good rough uh, start for it, I'll erase half of it digitally. I'll print it at a very low opacity on my printer, like 5%. And then you'll see this is how dark it usually comes out. 
And then that way I don't have to draw the whole thing. I only have to draw the half of it and then I'll flip it in Photoshop when I finish it. So I'll show you what the King of Hearts, where is he? Here he is. So this is what I will be working on a bit today. You know, I'll probably do a lot of the face and uh, the foliage around his beard. Uh, we'll see how far I can get on this in just a stream. But that's how I do the mirror flip. I, I find that Procreate is super easy to work with. And if you have a tablet, I would definitely download it. And if you're interested in making cards, this to me has been the easiest way to do it. I was going to do it in Photoshop and then like constantly flip it to see if it mirrors it. The fact that this has it built in to me is insane because then <laughs> it's so easy to create the illusion of um, uh, a seamless blend. And that's exactly what I, I need for this card deck. And it's funny because even as I'm, I'm past halfway on this deck and I'm already thinking about how I can make a new one and how I would do it differently, but it wouldn't be a true mirror. So I think with my next one, I don't want to, oh, you know what? I don't even know if I want to say it because there's that whole theory that you shouldn't say something you want to work on until you have some progress or else it'll never get done. But let's just say I do have another card deck that I am thinking about making. I'll just say that. Okay, I'm going to work with, I'm going to be bold today. I'm going to work with an HB. Normally I, I work with a 2H. But because I want to move a little faster for you guys today, and just because I've been like I've been ready to draw this for so long, I'm gonna go with an HB because I tend to work a little faster when I have an HB. I'm move my microphone off. So I usually have the other suit drawing near me, so I can use it for reference. Okay, so. I'm going to look at the comments really quick, but if you guys, like I said, if you have any comments or questions while I'm working on this, feel free to ask. We'll have a conversation. It doesn't even have to be about what I'm drawing specifically. Uh, let's just have fun, and I'm going to draw the King of Hearts. Uh, Amy's asking, do any of them have names? Uh, no, surprisingly. I have not named any of them. Also, I want to color them. <laughs> Actually, I might be adding red pencil to the, the diamond and heart pips. I had a big talk with Peter Moorbacher on how it shouldn't just be a white and grayscale deck because as much as I wanted a collector's deck where it would be all grayscale and then a playable deck which have, would have all the red uh, parts filled in, he was like, you know, I think you should just combine them, make it one deck. That way it's easier for people to understand what they're getting and they don't have to decide between the two. And then he convinced me to get some red pencils. So I'm going to be I'm gonna be testing out some red pencils soon. And I'm going to fill in the, the pips and see if I like how that looks. Uh, Eric says, maybe have a recorded bell for a notification. Oh, that's a good one. I should do that. Uh, Kandor says, indeed, it was the German traditional tech. Yep, that's the one that I, I think I want to do in the future too. Amy, I want to get all these tattooed as well. <laughs> I mean... They're, they're pretty fun. Kandor says, sadly, not all on tablets, only iPad, just for everyone else. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, Procreate's only for Apple. The thing about not saying what you plan or what you work on is I do that a lot too. Yeah, and honestly, it kind of hurts my drawing in the long run, so I try to be a little better about uh, planning things that are at least a big project. Because for most drawings, I feel most comfortable as an artist letting my mind wander and letting there be mistakes and then editing and that process is really fun for me but when it's a big project it is a headache so I try to pre-plan as much as I can. Hey Simon's here! Hey Simon! Time to pull away from Animal Crossing and watch the stream and draw a well. Hey well, this will be a good break for both of us because as soon as this is done I'm sure I'll get right back into Animal Crossing. <laughs> Amy you should work on a tarot deck. I am, I'm asked that on a daily basis. I'm not joking. If you look at my Instagram, on pretty much every post I do, there's always a, when will you make a tarot deck? And I plan to. I actually, it, it is in the works in terms of pre-planning. But kind of like what I said for uh, this deck, I w I'm going to do a lot of pre-planning before I just jump into doing cards. Because I already have an idea for Three of Swords, but I don't want to jump into it and not have 
uh, the whole deck kind of concepted out first, which I know sounds crazy because there's like 82 cards, but uh, that's kind of what I'm, I'm hoping to do. Kandor says, I just need Kingdom Hearts instead of King of... I just read... Or head? I think I meant red. Kingdom Hearts instead of King of Hearts. <laughs> I mean, this could be like an old version of Sora, but I doubt he would look this burly. Uh, Corey, would you not just try some colorization in Photoshop? I thought about it, but then I realized if I want to call this a pencil deck, I feel like I would be cheating if I, I didn't color it in with um, pencils as well. I mean, it is still an option. Like, if I hate the way I, I do colored pencils, it is still an option. I think that's kind of the, the double-edged sword with doing traditional, is people are really specific on if you do traditional work that they want the entire thing to be traditional. They don't want some of it being digital or else in their mind, it's like you cheated. And I know that that sounds crazy, but I do so many cons and I have so many friends that do both traditional and digital. And the reaction to digital is always met with just a hint of disdain, a little, a little drop, a little uh, teaspoon of disdain. And I hear it. I hear it all the time. So if I said that I did all my cards in traditionally, but then I filled in things digitally, just even saying the word digital I think immediately like cancels out that you're a traditional artist because then you're a mixed medium artist. And I'm like, oh boy. So I rather than dealing with that nonsense, because honestly, all of these cards started digitally, but me trying to explain that would just be a headache. <laughs> um, but that that's the way it is sometimes. Uh, Kandor says, the red pencils from Cool Erase have a beautiful texture. They are very buttery though. I will I'll try them. Actually, I'm, I think I'm going to try the pencils that Art of Price uses because uh, I know he recommends those. Simon says, same. I'm like, okay, I'll draw for two-ish hours and get back to the game. <laughs> yep, that's my game plan too. Azir, or Uzar, you're going to have to help me with the pronunciation there. How long does it take you to do one card? Uh, to be honest, like if I didn't have Animal Crossing to distract me tonight, I would have this card done by the end of the night for sure. So I would say eight hours roughly each card takes me. But that's if everything goes smooth. I mean, the which one was it? This one took me a while. And what was funny is her skin, her face, and her hands was like a breeze. Figuring out how to do her hair was a nightmare because originally I wanted her hair to be lighter to contrast her skin and the, the club symbol. But it just was not working. No matter what fade I did, it just looked weird. And it looked like two giant white balls by her head. And it looked very weird. So I'm like, you know what? Eventually I took the dip and I just made all of it dark. And it looked so much better. I I wish I would have known that going into it just to do that. But sometimes you got to experiment with your drawings. Um, softest Dungu says, hello, my name's Alex. I've been kind of lurking on your live streams lately. I never really said anything, but I do want to tell you that I very much admire you and your work. Well, thank you, Softest Dungo, or I should say Alex. Uh, it's been, it's been kind of fun getting back into the streaming mindset. And to be honest, I kind of missed it. <laughs> Candor, no third hand today. Nope, nope, because no one no one saw that. I definitely don't have three hands. Wink. <laughs> Simony says, would you consider adding a small amount of gold detail detailing to the suits? Uh, so every card is going to have a gilded edge. So every card is going to have a golden um, edge to them. I thought about filling in the pips with gold, but that ended up being uh, way too pricey for... Uh, adding gold on every card because the gold that I, I want to get is like a, a nice not like a crassy brassy looking gold but you know like a nice a very a very contemporary gold you might say actually I'm gonna sharpen my pencil it's gonna get really loud just for a second bear with me bear with me 
Hi. Uh, Matsuwa says traditional is where it's at. I mean, ironically, I, I taught how to paint in Photoshop for six years, so I do have love for digital too. But I think for me personally, I really do find the most comfort uh, working traditionally. But I mean, even with this though, technically I started these all digital and a lot of really well-known traditional artists actually do go back and forth between digital and traditional. I mean, not only my friend Sean, uh, but Wiley Beckert is a great example. Um, oh, like Scott Fisher is another one that I know goes back and forth. And I think it's just because, or even uh, Justin Gerard does sometimes color sampling uh, digitally. So make sure you guys can see this too. There we go. Uh, it just, it, whatever gets the best result, I think these are all tools that are available to us and we want to use them to the best of our capabilities to get the best result that we can. Sometimes I go quiet when I'm doing the face stuff just because I want it to look good. Because when you're drawing a character, you better believe, you butter believe that most of the attention that the viewing eye is going to look at your stuff is on the face. Uh, Kendra says, I think Sean does use Cool Erase too. At least they look like Cool Erase. Anyhow, Prismacolor. Yeah, that's true. I could always go to Prismacolor. You pronounce it Ozir. Oh, really? Or am I even saying that right? Ozir? Ozir? I'm sure I'm doing that wrong. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep trying, though. I'm going to have... So when I'm doing the face, I definitely work with smaller outlines first. You can see it with like the heart, I was able to go pretty bold pretty quickly. But I know with the face, I want it to read really well. I don't want to have to redo it a lot. So I try to get it right on the first time, which isn't always the case, but I'm trying to save myself time in the long run. And I'm going to make his eyebrows overly bushy. Did I have little berries in there? I did. Okay. Now I keep looking over at my, my jack and my queen just because I want them to all look cohesive. And having a template to help me out here has, has been really nice. Because then I don't have to think too much of like what elements I'm going to be adding to each card deck. The elements are already derived from the other two cards. So I'm hoping all the kings will be a little easier for me because of uh, because of that alone. Oh, I did pronounce it right. Oh, I'm glad. It's from Pakistan. So, Ozer, Ozir. Okay, I'll remember that. So then for the eyes, I'm gonna go for slightly older looking eyes, but still, I don't want him to look like the oldest king, considering he's the the King of Spring, technically. Um, but I do want each of the kings to have a very obvious age difference between them and the Jack. And this is going to look probably like a, um, a fusion of Santa Claus and the ghost of Christmas present. <laughs> That's kind of when I did my initial thumbnail, I was like, oh, this definitely looks like 
Santa and the the ghost of Christmas present from A Christmas Carol. It looks like they they fused into one being. They did the the Dragon Ball Z, and then they turned into this. I'm gonna pull my. So my iPod has my reference on it, or my iPad, my iPod, my 2007 iPod. I'm gonna put that in front of me. That's why it's kind of nice at this stage because I have it all roughed out for the most part. It's just doing nice clean outlines uh, to finish it off. Some of these nice swirly leaves in here. And I want a lot of the flowers to be uh, either budding or in full bloom to kind of represent, you know, he's the, the king or the jack had more flower buds. I wanted these flowers to be more uh, fully bloomed. So yeah, I notice when I stream, I go most quiet when I'm drawing the, uh, the facial features. Uh, Noah says, hey, sorry off topic, would you consider making a permaculture garden one day? Absolutely. Yes. Hey, Kyle. Hey, Kyle. Getting to hear you talk in depth about this is making me realize I'd love to see slash hear your process as you draw the clubs because of the race stuff we've talked about. This is Kyle. I know you're Marvel, man. I know. I know you're Marvel, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's another thing because, uh, I mean, a lot of you guys probably don't know this, but my main character in the story that I'm writing is a black guy and you know this is definitely something i mean that well i could have a whole uh, stream i should probably have you on the stream for this kyle because i feel like you could also give your insight and input into something like this because it is such a not a not a furious debate um subject matter but i do see a lot of people saying what you can't and what you can draw depending on who the artist is and it's it's a, always a very interesting topic for me to explore with people when I'm, I'm talking in person. But yeah, it's, it is funny that as of right now, now that you're mentioning it, my Queen of Clubs is my most popular card that I've done so far. I believe. I believe it is. I believe it got the best reaction out of all of them. And it, it just shows you because I was struggling so hard with her uh, hair that I thought uh, people weren't going to like it because I, I, thought I, I thought I just didn't do the contrast right. And I, I was kind of down on myself about that one, but then it turned out to be the most liked one so far. So it goes to show you that with art, you never know uh, what piece is going to generate the most social buzz and presence. Actually, now that I'm really thinking about it, Kyle, I would love to have you on the stream because if not for like serious topics, we can definitely debate movies. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, I'm a huge movie nerd. And Kyle is one of the friends that I have found uh, in recent times that I feel we have really good movie debates and talks. I've been watching a lot of movies right now, Kyle. A lot of old ones. A lot of bad ones. I don't know if any of you have seen How to Train Your Dragon 3. 
And I don't mean to offend anyone that, that likes that movie, but in my opinion, that is, that's so far the worst movie I've seen in 2020. I just, I was not a fan of anything that was presented except for there was some gorgeous animation and uh, visually it was beautiful, but in terms of the story and the context of the characters, I was not having a good time. <laughs> not one bit. I'm also doing my best in this drawing not to skip to the right side. I try to work from top, bottom, left, right, like you're reading a book. That way I prevent smudging as much as possible. That's also another one of the questions I always get is, how do you prevent smudging? And it's really easy. Just don't place your hand on areas that you've already drawn. So the easiest way to do that is not to draw areas that are on the right side first. Mind you, I almost never follow this rule completely myself, so I would be hypocritical if I was pretending like that was uh, something I always stand by. Um, Psycho Candy says, are you using vellum? I am not. I'm just using, are you talking about the paper? I'm using just uh, mixed media Strathmore paper. Simon says, what pencil hardness blackness is that? The lines look so clean. Obviously, it has a lot to do with your confidence in lines, but just for curiosity's sake. So this is a HB, and I use General Kim, Kimberly pencils. Yeah, General Pencil Company, the Kimberly brand, and these are HBs. But to be honest, normally I almost always work my with my two H first, and that's because the lines uh, they're much easier to erase if I need to lift them. But you can see how much lighter the, the difference between the two are. I, I normally don't go bold like I am right now, but I, I've just felt the burst of energy when I started the stream, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to jump into it. And you know, if it turns bad, I guess I can throw it away and start over, but I, I'm feeling good today. <laughs> so I just kind of went for it. And then, actually, to end all my streams, though, or to end all my drawings, I always work with a 2.2 .2 mechanical pencil. And this is also an HB lead, and this is really tiny. So this is really to kind of end um, my details, make sure my lines are clean as much as possible. And then I'll do a 2H if I need to add more gradations or smooth anything out. Oh, you know what, I'm gonna move my comment section to this side just so that I can see it much easier. There we go. Uh, Kyle says, Eep, I'm so scared of streams, but I would love to talk on this stuff. Yeah, I honestly would love to have you. If ever we get out of this quarantine mode and <laughs> you can make your way up here, we'll get something going. Um, Books Dust says, why don't you put a piece of uh, tissue under your hand to prevent smudging? I just, I don't like the feel of it. I, I know I'm, I, it's kind of like a, I'm being picky. But honestly, that's the truth. I don't. I don't have a good excuse. <laughs> I just don't like the feeling of something under my hand. And I. I don't know about you guys, but I'm the same way with. I. I love jewelry. I can't stand wearing jewelry. Like I. I love rings. I like the idea of them. I like drawing them. But I personally am always fidgeting with them if I have them on me. And especially when I'm drawing, they're constantly like clunking on the paper. And one time, I put my hand down, and I must have been a little heavy-handed that day and it dented the paper in a little bit. So ever since then, I just, I don't wear rings anymore. Uh, Ilano, Ilana says, Elena says, it's a lot easier to stay away from areas you've drawn when you are right-handed. When you're left-handed, you have the mindset of starting on the left because you write from left to right. Oh yeah, yeah, that would be a little difficult. Simon says, I'll be completely honest with you. Yell at me later. I have had never used an H pencil or even HB before meeting you, and it's changed my life. Uh, I would I would even go a little lighter. Try an, a 2H. That's what really helps me with starting out uh, my drawings. And honestly, I worked with mechanical pencils for pretty much my entire college career, and I wanted to be the rebel that was like, oh, my teachers told me not to work with mechanical, but I can still produce good things with it. And then once I started incorporating traditional pencils, I was like, oh, damn, <laughs> I see what they mean. Because uh, you can get such a, a richer range of value, and I didn't want to admit it. So I was still, like, secretly using traditional pencils, but then when I went to school, I would only bring out my mechanical. I was, like, too stubborn at the time. I was like, ah, oh, but now I, now I can just admit, 
yeah, I, I can see the benefits of working with traditional pencils. But that's not to discredit mechanical either. I still work with mechanical for like loose drawings or if I'm just doing free sketching. I think a lot of it does come down to the artist, not so much the tool. But there are times where I have noticed the, the hardness and the ability to adjust it as you're drawing has been really nice. Which, I mean, I guess you could get mechanical pencils that had different hardness leads in them as well. So that's not to say that you couldn't have, you know, like three mechanical pencils with different hardness that you switch between. Well, it's funny, doing this kind of stuff on the streams is kind of nice because I already drew the outline underneath. And what's always the hardest part for me in drawing is trying to be creative with the lines. Because this is just autopilot. I can, I can render for hours and not have to think too hard. Oof, I need, a, I need some tea. Whenever I, I'm like short of breath, that's when I realize I need to drink some tea. So that's what, that's what I mean. I talk too much. Then I ramble and then my breath catches up to me. Uh, Simon, I've been using a 4H and 2H right now mainly and I've enjoyed it a lot. I don't feel as nervous drawing because I'm actually able to erase it. Exactly. That Literally, that's the main reason I recommend using it is because then there's a safety net. But I will say, I have gotten a lot of flack and um, my, <laughs> some of my friends will say, you shouldn't have to draw with a safety net. You should be able to feel so confident in your lines that you don't have to erase. And it's kind of the mindset of an ink artist or a pen artist. And I to it's totally valid. I can't even try to argue that because I have worked with pens and inks. And I do seem to work more confidently with those uh, mediums. But for me personally while I'm working this is so therapeutic and drawing is such a state of mind for me that I, I prefer working in pencils and pencils that I know I can erase because if I get lost in the drawing which I'm sure a lot of you guys know what that means you're just kind of you're not really focused and you're kind of dilly-dallying on the drawing I can erase it if necessary because sometimes when you dilly-dally your pieces start to kind of lose uh, either composition or the values are all over the place. So I prefer uh, working with my 2H pencils. Uh, Anna says, did you have any difficulty returning to digital when you did your Miko piece or was it relatively easy getting back into Photoshop even when you're more focused on pencil drawings now? It was a breeze. It was just a snap. No, it was, it was difficult. Uh, I even though I taught digital for six years, going back to it after doing pencil almost exclusively for like two years was a challenge. And I have two other sword play illustrations that I kind of have started, but uh, because of this card project, I, I kind of put everything else on back burner. But yeah, it was, it was a little difficult. But what's funny is near the end of working on that Miko illustration, is I really found my love for digital again. And it's funny how it is like riding a bike, but the first few miles are a little weird. And then you start to learn like when you're supposed to turn the knobs and how fast you should go or how much pressure you apply to the brakes. So it's like little things that you forget, but once you're back into it, you kind of remember. But uh, I definitely don't think I was as quick as I used to be. I feel like I used to be so quick uh, digitally than I am with pencils, for sure, than I am with pencils. So yeah, it was, it was a little weird. Um, Eric says, I disagree with the argument that you don't erase, because sometimes a random line can be better or improve the piece, in my opinion. I like the random element. Very true as well. Uh, this is why uh, my friend Pui, he works with a pen to start off all of his drawings, and he creates this chaotic line and he describes his process as organized chaos so there are artists there out there that do different methods than what i do that's why i always recommend don't take my word as uh this is what i have to be doing in my work this is just my way of working and it's one of many that you can explore and you, you should try as many as you can to find what is comfortable for you because eventually 
you kind of nitpick your own style based on working in different techniques of other people. And I've learned even so much from my background in digital and how much I was able to carry over into my traditional work because of that. So don't, uh, don't, oh, what's that word? Don't exclude the idea of working in a different medium just because you don't think you'll be comfortable in it. I learned a lot about working in charcoal, about my own process and working with values. I learned a lot about myself working in uh, powdered graphite and with oils. So I would recommend trying a bunch of different mediums. And I, I swear, I will start at some point this year my uh, stained glass um, experimentations because I have all the materials except for the actual glass. But I have the light box. I have the things that I need to use for it. But I just haven't prioritize the time frame which makes sense for me because even like tonight admittedly this weekend is kind of dedicated to animal crossing we're having people over tomorrow and m more than anything this card deck needs to get done because i want to have kickstarter mid-april a kinder says i'm sorry i had to leave i have a lot of household to do and i want to get some art and rest done as well yes go get some art and rest done thank you candor for stopping by but i'm gonna keep going here So the little uh, symbols here is basically representative of the symbols that the queen and the jack have on them. Actually, these aren't as flowy. A more curves and swerves. What a gorgeous day. Can you guys hear the birds? Man, I know like things are rough outside of, or I guess in the world in general, but it's just such a nice peaceful day today. And for a lot of you watching, this is typically how I do drawings where I have a uh, kind of a template and foundation set up for me. I do a kind of rougher outline on everything first, and then I'll go in, I'll start cleaning up, and then I'll add values and whatnot. So I think for this live stream, oh, I still have an hour. Uh, I, I kind of want to do a pass on the entire drawing first and then go back in and do some rendering in some area, just like what I did with the mermaid yesterday, that way you can kind of see the, the process that usually goes into um, my art making. Because it's definitely usually like separated into chunks, and my first chunk is uh, doing a line art everywhere. Um, Books Dust says, I've only used H pencils for technical drawings in school, and now I can't find, now I can't use them for my art. In my mind, they're pencils for architects and designers. I might need to change my mindset. I mean, they probably are primarily used by architects and designers, but why not use them yourself? I, I, I always found it funny when people uh, label things as like something they can or can't use. Because you can literally use anything you want. But it's uh, what we believe, what will work, and what won't that I think makes the, the difference in the actual piece. Oh wait, so this is a little strange because I've never had to do the mirror flip where I have one of the arms that are blank that I'm not drawing. All the arms that I usually draw are both in the scene um, before I do the flip, even like this one. So this is one of the few ones because I have him holding a flower in the other hand, I wanted to draw the hand that's holding the flower, that way it gets the best representation. Because if I drew this hand and then I had like a floating flower, it might not look like he's holding it when I combine them. So I always try to uh, do the flip depending on if the, or where the hand is holding an object. 
Wait, I'm going to move this aside here. There we go. Um, Kyle says, I'll reply to peaceful day outside. It's been cool seeing pictures of nature, animals, and normally busy people filled spaces serene and empty, like the penguins walking around the shed aquarium. Mm-hmm. I agree. And I've been watching um, people post videos about in Italy how like swans have returned and the water is cleaner. It's it's very interesting times right now. Very, very interesting. There we go. So maybe maybe I'll do like this no i'll do the whole line art first i keep like telling myself that i won't have enough time but we're looking good on time and i know i better get as much as i can done because i know i'll be swept back into the world of animal crossing when this finishes But then I feel, sometimes I do this with video games, where I'll tell myself I have to work for a couple hours first, and then I can enjoy a couple hours of gaming. And then it'll go like back and forth. And I, I honestly don't really game as much anymore. I do play League of Legends at night from time to time, but I just, I don't, uh, I don't really play video games anymore. Well, eh, that's a lie. I, I do, but not like big, expansive world games. I think Animal Crossing is the first type of like world building game in terms of, you know, all you do is you, it's kind of like Minecraft. You're just creating your own little neighborhood and collecting resources. So it's very cute, but I rarely play these games. Uh, that's because I think they, they require a lot of time and energy. And sometimes I'm not fully willing to give it. But right now, since everyone's kind of playing Animal Crossing, I'm like, more than willing to play it because then all my friends and I can play together, which I'm sure a lot of you guys maybe are thinking the same thing if you bought Animal Crossing. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like hint at his hair, but then it's being covered by all this foliage. He looks too sad. I gotta like change this. I want him to be like a happy king. Just a happy king of hearts. Um, Booksta says, in Italy, dolphins have returned, too. Oh, I did not know that. That's crazy. Uh, Simon says, Animal Crossing Squad. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you join our Discord community below, we have a link to my boyfriend's Animal Crossing server if you want to share your Nintendo ID and we'll all go like visit each other's towns and stuff. Ella says, when I was younger, I used to make a lot of graphite drawings. When I showed it to my parents, they asked me if I would color them or ink them. It was my it was first when I got to know your art that I understood that graphite could be used to make finished pieces, which made me really happy. Yeah, it's something that I've been fighting for the past like three years at conventions. Because I have so many people come up to me and be like, Where are you gonna finish these? Why why aren't they colored? But the last year, I haven't heard it as much. I feel like it's starting to become a bit more normalized. And 
I don't want to just say it's because of me going to cons. I feel like there's a lot of good graphite artists kind of making a statement that these are finished work. I mean, you look at Alan Williams and Miles Art and Velarte, myself, Stephen Russell Black, a lot of artists that primarily work in graphite, and that's how they, they finish it. You know, that's the finished result is in pencil. So I think it's kind of changing the opinion, the public opinion of graphite being finished a finished work of art, a finished illustration. But I will say it was frustrating for a little while because <laughs> the same thing that you're talking about, uh, Ella, where it's, when are you going to color? Are you gonna... Yeah, I so beards are really interesting for me because I never draw beards. Uh, <laughs> you would think that in all the times, because I like drawing big flowy hair, but I don't like drawing beards. But if I can make the beard look like flowing uh, curly hair and it has this very ornate look to it, then I enjoy drawing it. Because if it was just a rough and scratchy beard, I don't think I would, I would want to draw it as much. But since I can kind of make it all fantastical, I'm going to go ahead and do that with this king. It kind of reminds me of, if you guys have seen The Little Mermaid, King Triton's beard, how it has that very flowy uh, look to it. It's kind of what I'm imagining. I was also told to be more flowy with how I draw this type of beard or just hair in general or to trust your mark making because if you're shaky when you're doing your lines oftentimes it'll read as shaky and you want your hair especially if you want it to be like this very gorgeous you know flowing in the wind hair you want your lines to kind of capture that same uh, movement so sometimes I go a little slower with drawing hair because I'll make sure that every line that I'm drawing has a, have a, a purpose to it, you know, an underlying structural purpose to what the end result will look like. I know I'm going to have so many... Um, comments about you never draw old men in beards you're diversifying <laughs> and admittedly it's true I, I never draw um, this kind of a subject matter but honestly I feel like I should I, I don't feel like I'm terrible at it and even when I was in high school I remember I drew this picture of um, an older woman and it, it became my one of my art teachers favorite drawings and she was saying how she doesn't want to see pretty anymore or like society's pretty represented in the art world anymore she's like that's literally 90 percent of posts well at that time it was gallery work um, but i'm sure she would say the same thing about instagram and what's happening today because that didn't exist back then uh in that uh, artists need to diversify themselves because everything's becoming blended together. Everyone's, you know, borrowing ideas from one another, but instead of it being this beautiful amalgamation of growth, it's like plateaued everyone. And then everyone's reaching to be a mediocre artist that creates mediocre work because they're not they're not looking inside themselves anymore. They're not trying to be better than what they were yesterday they're just trying to engage the most with the social interaction whether it be likes or comments or shares or whatever so I, I always want to mention on these streams that i think the best artists are the ones that follow uh the calling that they're hearing in their head on what they want to draw how they should present it if there is something that is troubling you or if there is something that you want to express whether it be anger or sadness Put it in your art. I really do believe that's where great art can be uh, born from, or at least the, the inspiration or even motivation. 
it doesn't mean that if you're angry, you have to draw like an angry person uh, drawing. It just means take out your emotion in the way that you're doing your, uh, your brush strokes. If you're a painter or if you're in a graphite artist, maybe the way that you're representing how you're feeling through a metaphor in what you're drawing, you know, that kind of uh, work. And it could just be because I, I'm personally like, I'm, I'm starving for more artists to show themselves in their work. You know, I just feel that when artists really do push themselves and I see it, they just create such good work and I, I want to see more of that selfishly I want to see more of that <laughs> uh Elena I feel like I keep saying that wrong Elena 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 I get you I've tried video games and I enjoy watching video games be played for the story and the visuals but I rather watch it while drawing or reading exactly so I think with Josh having a love for video games, I get to like draw while watching him play. So it's been like this perfect um, balancing between me and him. Because then I still get the joy of, because I mean, I, I did play a lot of video games growing up. So uh, there, are, there are times that I miss it, but I feel like I get the, the joy from it by watching Josh play him. Um, Ella says, me drawing pretty girls. <laughs> I mean, Ella, I do the same thing from time to time. I draw pretty people. And I think sometimes, and this, this is going to sound really weird and kind of like I'm knocking myself, but sometimes I use a blank, vacant face as a template to put on the things that I actually care about on the character. So even with like this Jack of Hearts, I've drawn this face hundreds of times. But what I wanted to show that was different was the wardrobe, the way I'm drawing his hair, the elements around him. So sometimes I have the Final Fantasy trope where all the characters have a very similar face, but I'm almost not looking at pushing um, the focus on what they look like, but rather I'm trying to push the focus on who they are that is being described by either what they're wearing or what context of the environment that I'm putting them in. So I, I kind of understand why some artists do mostly draw pretty girls. I mean, there are some that I think just do it because it's easy and safe. But if you generally enjoy drawing pretty girls, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, I do that from time to time too, except I draw a lot more pretty boys as well too. Um, but I think it's a good base for them to, for you to build upon. But I don't think it should be something that you have to rely upon. I think there's a there's a fine line between that. Uh, let's see. You usually get it right, Ella. It's pronounced like Elena in the States with an I sound in the middle. Elena. Elena. Elena? Oh, okay. I, I can remember that. Elena. Oh, something I should mention with the King of Hearts. He is uh, considered to be the Suicide King. And the reason for this... Oh, do I have the cards on me? Oh, I don't have my playing cards near me. Uh, but the King of Hearts, he had a... I believe originally was an axe or something, and he was holding it behind his head. But over the years, because of the printing being so poor, the axe like slowly got further and further behind his head. And now the standard card that we see, it looks like he's stabbing himself in the head. And that's why he is a coin, or the, the expression is coin, the Suicide King. So I wanted to kind of represent the sword behind his head, but not make it look quite as fatal, we'll say. Uh, Books Dust says, what do you think about the same face syndrome? I mean, kind of like what I just mentioned, I definitely suffer from it. Actually, I take that back. I don't suffer from it. I thrive in it because <laughs> I don't see same face syndrome as much of a problem as I think most of the art community does. I think it becomes a problem when you're not trying to push yourself anymore. But when I'm drawing my face, I think if, in, okay, let me put it this way. If someone can recognize your style from just your face, so if you didn't draw anything else, no hair, no bust, no body, no background, just the face. If someone can recognize who the artist is just from your face, 
you must stand out so much from the crowd on how you draw faces, and that face is uniquely your own. It's like a trademark signature. So the way that I look at the same face syndrome, not so much as a bad thing, but as a, a representation of how much you stand out with the way that you draw faces amongst the crowd. And it could just be a way for me to justify <laughs> doing it. Maybe I've like com created this complex in my head and that's why I'm able to justify it. But I really do believe that there's something to be said about an artist who has such a defined way of drawing faces that it stands out um, just from that. But I do think you should you know, elaborate more on it because when I'm drawing, I try not to just draw people and busts, where I do see some artists do it that I know have more potential in them. I'm, I'm not going to name names or anything because they're great people. I've met them. I actually do respect what they do a lot, but I just know they're holding back their potential. And that's why I never try to... I look at my Instagram often, uh, maybe a little too often, and I don't want there to just be nine, my top nine images to just be people bus. I try to throw in a creature. I try to throw in something that's cute. I try to throw in something that maybe is a little darker, more macabre, because I want to show that I have a variation of range and I don't want to be typecasted as one thing. Now, there are benefits to being typecasted. I feel like there's a level of expectation. I feel like usually people get more followers if they kind of contribute to only one way of either drawing or one subject matter. But I think internally you'll be uh, struggling with the idea that you're trapped in this prison that you've kind of created for yourself. So, th I mean, this is a lot of my personal opinion. I don't, I don't think that you should be taking this as fact. But from the years that I've been doing art and how many artists I've met over the years, I do see a consistent... Uh, um, mindset between all of us is that we want to create what we enjoy without becoming a stereotype of ourselves. So kind of, I, I'm kind of rambling right now, but that's how I feel about uh, that. And uh, that's why I think why I'm okay with having same face syndrome. Eric says, you draw pretty girls. I sometimes have to bonk myself not to draw beefy guys. <laughs> I mean, if you enjoy drawing beefy guys, kind of going back to what I said, draw beefy guys. I think sometimes we limit ourselves because we're afraid of the perceptions and reactions that other people are going to do. But uh, even like with myself, I think when I was 22, I was kind of ashamed to draw pretty boys because instantly if you're a, a male artist and you draw pretty boys, you're gay or you're too feminine. You're, you know, there's a lot of associations that come with it. But I'm seeing the world and the way that people view it change so much, even in the last five years, where I think it's normal if a boy artist wants to draw a very pretty, attractive guy. And they could be completely straight and it wouldn't have any context or underlying um, judgment to it. But when I was 21 and I would post a pretty boy, I would definitely get called out and, hey, this looks like Justin Bieber. And, um, you know, I, I was definitely called a gay flamer. There was a, there was a lot of a hatred that I received for it. But I kept posting it because, you know what, I enjoyed it. And at that time, I wasn't out completely. And I, I think I was hiding behind my art in some ways because I was showing who I really was in my art more than I was in life. And it was a very strange time for me because I used art as my escape from reality. And I think that's why I poured so much of it myself into it and why I think um, people responded so well to it back in the day is because I think they could see that I was being earnest with what I was drawing. And uh, I guess is another tip for you guys is to never hold back if you want to be drawing something. If there is a subject matter or a medium that you want to indulge in, indulge in it. Even if it's something that maybe society doesn't necessarily enjoy. I mean, heck, even if it's not safe for work stuff. I've seen artists really thrive in it, even though it might not be like my personal taste, but it's something that they want to do. And there's definitely a community and a following for that. So always try to be genuine with what you draw and what you want to draw. So if you want to draw beefy guys, 
Draw the beefiest guys you can. Draw a cow. <laughs> Uh, Elena says, that sounds like the problem with the finished coat of arms. The lion on it looks like it's swallowing its own sword. Or are you talking about the king of hearts? Oh yeah, thank you, Ella, for posting the reference. Yeah, uh, it looks like he's stabbing himself in the head. Uh, Eric says, the same face syndrome was something I stopped being sensitive to since it seems like a minor thing if the artist draws a whole comic, and so I cut them some slack in that department. Yeah, that too. Um, Ella says, I get super excited about unique faces, face features, so I like to vary my faces. Then I have certain preferences like wide apart eyes and such. Yep, and you'll find you'll have all these little um, specific preferences that you're choosing, maybe subconsciously while you're working. So for me, I really like hooded eyes or I like far apart eyes. I like big foreheads. I like smaller nose, more like um, round noses. And I... I enjoy uh, thicker eyebrows. So usually all my characters have those kind of traits because I think the way that someone draws a person says a lot about the artist themselves. I mean, I, I feel like I'm rambling too much. Let me, <laughs> let me get back into the drawing a bit. See what I mean? This is what happens when I get all, all fired up. I get so excited, I just want to talk about it. Um, Ella says, what if you don't have the skills yet for the big ideas you have? I literally can show you right now. I'm working on a piece called Hollow Queen. And in my humble opinion, this is one of the best things I have drawn to date, but I don't feel confident in finishing it yet. And I know that sounds kind of strange, but I'm putting this one on the back, back, back burner right now because I know eventually I'll come back to it and I'll be able to attack it with a little bit more uh, self-driven confidence. But right now, I, I don't want to feel like I'm rushing it because I love the foundation that I built for myself, but I don't want to, I don't want to go into it yet. And I know that sounds strange because a lot of people think I have this like confidence that is never ending, but I am a human being and I, I think I'm just more honest about things. And I can be honest about my own faults and fallacies, and especially when I don't think I feel comfortable going into something. I don't think that's a reason for me to never come back to it. Like, I'm definitely wanting to touch it up after I finish this card deck and then see how I'm feeling with it. But the way that I, I look at the question specifically is you can put something on the back burner, but don't put it on the back burner assuming you'll get to it eventually. Like, actually have a plan for yourself. So for me... I'm sit when when June comes around, I'm going to pull this piece back up and I'm going to force myself to work on it. You never want to have a bunch of back, 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 back burner pieces because then you'll never have anything fully cooked. Those have a bunch of things simmering on your giant oven with <laughs> like 50 burners on it. So that's, that's how I would treat it. Eric says, we must prevent Tim from drawing. <laughs> uh, well, thank you guys. Eric says, um, that gives me an Evangelion Peter Morbacher vibe. You know what I could show you? Do I have it? Me and Pete actually started a collab. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Aha! All right, so for those of you who don't know who Pete Morbacher is, he does uh, Angelarium. I think he is one of the best living digital artists today. Um, him and I have become pretty great friends over the past two, two and a half years, and he's just someone that I can always confide and trust in when it comes to art, critique, and uh, motivation. So we've been trying to do some collabs over the years. We've, I think we've tried two, but neither of them really pan out because I think we're both uh, we're both at cons usually when we're trying to do these collabs, but eventually I want him to either fly here or I'll fly down to Florida with Josh and we'll have like a true collab that we want to do. But anyways, here is what we started one day and he decided that he didn't like it anymore. So then we stopped doing it, but I don't think it's that bad. I think this is still salvageable. I think we just got to move some things around. Uh, so yeah. Pete is someone I really enjoy his company and I love his work. So if you also want to check out more of what he does, 
He is Angelarium, or I believe it's Pete Morbacher now on Instagram. So he, he's great. Like I said, I think one of the best living digital artists today. Okay, where am I at? Oh, it's 3.20. Oh, no. I've been rambling too much, guys. Ah, I was doing so well on time. Okay. Well, maybe... You know what? Okay, I won't just completely do the line art because you've, you've already seen how I do line art. So instead, I'll start rendering so you can kind of see a glimpse into how I would uh, render um, a piece. <laughs> Corey says, do you think it's because it has an actual face? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I didn't like it that much. I, w I can admit that I don't think it would is our strongest. I don't, I don't think it's that weak, though, either. I feel like it's totally salvageable. Maybe I'll snail mail it back and forth with them. Um, Emery says, how do you come up with all the details in your work? Uh, you know, slowly. But a lot of it is, what is the mood that I'm going for? So if you're adding a bunch of flowers or fauna or flora, not fauna, if you're adding a lot of flora, uh, it's going to give that impression of like nature and homely and sweet and warm. Uh, not always. I mean, you could draw a poisonous flower, so you get a totally different vibe. But the elements that you're adding to your piece will definitely say a lot about the drawing as a whole. So the elements that you add, you want to add to the story and to the context of the mood that you're trying to create. So for my king, I want it to be very lush and rich. And I want to add a lot of elements of roses. I want his crown to be made of natural elements, you know, because he's not the diamond king. Where I, When I draw the diamond king, he's going to be very stiff, proper, and, you know, loaded with jewels. So a lot of the details that you add are just reflections of the character that you are drawing. And I might do uh, the, the Jack of Clubs live as well. So if you want to see me do a different card, uh, I think I might do the line art before I do the stream so that I just do the shading part. I'll probably have the Jack of Club uh, stream next Wednesday. So if you want to come watch me do that card, I will be doing that live next Wednesday. And speaking of other streams, I am doing one on Monday where I am gold leafing 11 canvases. So if you want to see the process on how to gold leaf different uh, images and illustrations, that's what I will be doing. And then next Friday, I have a duo stream with Babs Webb. And she is a magnificent, like, I, I truly believe she's one of the best graphite artists living today, uh, alongside like Pete Morba or uh, Alan Williams and all these other pencil artists I admire. But Babs is, has become one of my good friends, and I, I love Babs. She's so funny. And her work is so dark, and it takes you to, to this very dark, fantastical world where it's spooky, but it's intriguing. So I'm going to be working with her next Friday. So if you want to come to that stream and learn a little bit more about uh, different ways to work, uh, come to that stream. And they all start at 2, except for the one on Monday, which will start at noon, because that will be a long stream. I have 11 canvases to do, and that is no easy feat. Oh, I keep saying I'm going to render, and then I, I go back into <laughs> doing the outline. See what I mean? Where I, When I have autopilot going on, I'm not even thinking about what I'm saying. I'm just like, oh yeah, now we're going to be shading, and I go back to line art. <laughs> Ella says, if he doesn't want to sell it, you can give it to me for free. No worries. <laughs> to be honest, I'm going to snail mail it back and forth between him and I because I think it's very salvageable, and I want to see what we could do with it. He says he wants to take whatever we do and uh, put it into Photoshop and color it, which I think is fine, but I, I also want to have a finished color or a uh, pencil drawing with it.
God, I'm outlining again. Tim, focus. Okay. I'm going to do some shading here. So I think I'm going to do the face because usually that's what most people want to see when I, I draw. And also this chair. Squeakiest chair in the world. So for all of my heart family people, I kind of want them to have a very sun-kissed skin value. So I want it to look like they're in the sun a lot and to have kind of a tanness to them. Actually, I did it pretty well with the jack, but I think the queen, I need to make a bit uh, more tan. She's way too fair skinned for uh, what I want the family to represent. And that's what I'm talking about where if I would have had more pre-planning, I would have seen, okay, I don't want my queen of hearts just to be this pretty fair skinned lady. I want all three of them to have a cohesive theme behind them. And I think that's where I messed up a little bit with the pre-planning stage is I feel like I should have wrote down, physically wrote down, what each suit elements I want to include in all of them. And if I would have thought about it and thought, okay, I want them to have this very lush look to them, I want them to have this uh, impression that they're in the sun a lot, then I would have immediately had all the, the skin values be a little darker. So just a little, little piece of advice for those of you who are doing a cohesive either, uh, I, I mean, if you're doing a card deck, if you want them to be cohesive, like pre-planning is important for this kind of stuff. Uh, Books Dust says, a few years ago when I made an art station account and he started following a bunch of cool artists, one of them was Pete, and after following him, he followed me back. I felt like I was about to die. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's always a really cool feeling. Uh, I specifically remember when Alan Williams followed me. He's like my art hero. I, I think he is the best living graphite artist today. But when he followed me, it was like the like the wind gets taken out of you and you're thinking, oh my God, he's going to be potentially seeing anything I post from now on. The standard of myself of what I have to create just, just went up a notch, you know, but I think that's good. I think it's good to have a little pressure under you. Um, hey, Schwa Plays Games. Schwa is my partner and he uh, runs his own YouTube, the Schwa Plays Games, but he uh, helps mod with me on Wednesdays. So he says, also check out the Discord. There's a channel that Tigil made that you can write out some questions for the Bab stream next Friday. Yes, so if you have specific questions for artists, and you know what, I, I'll ask Pete if he wants to do one with me. I'm sure he would be fine with doing that. Uh, I, I want questions, though, that you guys want to ask as well. Because I've seen so many interviews with artists where it's the same type of questions, like where do you get your inspiration from, blah, 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 blah. And I want there to be something more of like, when did you notice that your art really took a shift in the way it was being received? And do you have a specific piece that you can talk about that you really saw a growth in your uh, following? And why do you think that was? So questions like that where I think a lot of us want to have a little bit more in-depth questions or very specific, like oddly specific questions. So if you have any questions for artists that you want to ask, I would definitely look in the Discord and... Um, put in those comments. Oh, I forgot to mention, below me we have the poll going on. I'm going to be drawing Cloud from Final Fantasy VII uh, because I want to celebrate the remake coming out soon. But I don't know if I want to draw Happy Cloud, like the one represented in Final Fantasy VII, or Emo Cloud, not the one represented in Advent Children, but the one in Kingdom Hearts because that outfit is phenomenal. And uh, right now it's 50-50. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, I think I'm going to keep this poll up for two more weeks or like three more weeks right before the game comes out. And then the day before the, the game comes out, I think I'm going to do a drawing of Cloud. Um, Book says, Pete is the best. I'll build a statue of him one day. <laughs> you should let him know that. I'm sure he'll think it's funny. Okay. Ah, keep shading how much time. Oh, I still got a half hour. Oh, I'm good. Oh, no, I'm calm again. Okay. So let's make this king look a little more fleshed out. So immediately I try to make the upper eyelashes a little darker. You know what, I can even zoom in for some of this. 
because I notice that that often turns an eye from looking a little lifeless to a little life-filled. Life-full. Is that even a word? I don't think that is a word. So I'm going to give them intense, lighter eyes. If I go quiet right now, just because I'm concentrating really, really hard. Oh, nope, that makes them look cross-eyed. Oh, ignore that. Don't look. <laughs> Don't look at that. Also, if you guys have uh, any stream suggestions, I think that's another thing. Uh, actually, Josh, could you add a room for stream suggestions under current events? Because I feel, I don't want to add too many rooms, because I know we just took out a bunch and it really cleaned up the Discord. But I feel like we need a room specifically for stream suggestions. And I want to actually do some of them to show that, you know, your guys' input actually does affect what I could create. Because during these quarantine times, I will be streaming a lot more often, like almost every, every day, basically. And if there are like specific tutorials you want to see, or I want to start doing let's draw, so something where we'll draw thing something together. Uh, I would, was just given the suggestion of bringing back my live life drawing streams, so I might try to schedule something similar to that next week. I think I'm going to do a let's draw a hand first. So if you want to draw a hand with me and get better at drawing hands, I think I'm going to post that. Actually, maybe I'll do that on Wednesday instead. I'll think about it. Because I'm going to plan out my entire schedule on Sunday and Monday. Or, no, probably Sunday. And um, I'll create events for it on YouTube. So if, there are, is, if there's a specific stream you want to watch and you don't have to watch all my other ones, you can click on set a reminder specifically for that one. Because I, I understand that, you know, you guys have lives too and you can't come to every stream. I mean, I, I wouldn't even recommend that. That's nuts. I sometimes think it's crazy when I see... Uh, a lot of my mods reappear for every stream. I'm like, I'm sorry if this is like cutting into your day-to-day uh, -day life. But I think oftentimes we just want background noise uh, to listen to while we're working. I mean, <laughs> not, that, not that I'm calling myself background noise, but I'm definitely calling myself background noise because I ramble a lot. And I think, you know why partially that is? When I first worked at CG Cookie, one of uh, the times when I was doing my initial tutorials is like my interview process with them. I did some sample tutorials and the, the piece of advice that will always stick with me, well, there was a few about doing tutorials. One is that I say actually too much and to never say um or like. And I know sometimes I still do that from time to time, but they were like adamant that I had to cut out any ums or likes. And if I said it too many times within a minute, I had to redo the whole tutorial basically. Uh, but the thing that really stuck with me was you can never have empty air for more than eight seconds. Apparently, for a live stream or tutorials, if it's longer than eight seconds, it's immediately uncomfortable. There's this vibe of eerie, awkward silence, and no one wants to be a part of it. So when I'm streaming, partially why I ramble a lot is because I'm filling the dead air so that it's not just no no it like empty vast nothingness uh and i think it's because that, that fear that was built into me uh don't let people get bored uh was built into me when i was working there so now i just can't shut up <laughs> um anna says i remember you're also working on a giant drawing with an underwater scene what are your suggestions when working on pieces that require taking it in and out of the back burner many times great question one sec so for those of you who don't know, I am currently working on a five-foot drawing that is an underwater utopia, as I've been calling it. I've been, I've been nicknaming it, codename, Aquatica. And it is a five-foot drawing where I want a hundred mermaids and a thousand fish. So you know, before I talk about uh, how to attack something like that, I just want to say why I'm doing this, because this might sound kind of confusing if, uh, to those of you who might not know me. So art is something that I love feeling challenged by. And when I get bored with my own art, it usually means that I'm not challenging myself enough. And I definitely have days where I feel like I'm punching in. I never feel good on those days. I don't know how um, you guys feel about this, but you probably understand that 
there are sometimes you'll just draw something and it might be either out of your comfort zone or something you've kind of drawn before. It's not really anything new or presenting an original idea. It's just something to keep your hand moving, which is still good. I think drawing every day is still good, regardless of what the result is. But when, for me though, uh, I can get bored that I feel like I'm just skating by. I don't like feeling that I'm just relying on my Instagram following or something to make me feel good about my art. Because if I'm letting myself down, it doesn't matter how many followers I have. I'll still feel crappy at the end of the day. So instead, I, I try to create pieces that I know are going to be difficult, that are outside of my comfort zone, and will challenge me that I can't just knock out in a weekend. So the one before this was The Collector. I wonder if I have a print of it here. Actually, Josh, if you're watching right now, could you possibly grab me a print of The Collector? Sorry. Um, just for an example. But then uh, after that one was finished... While I was working on it, I was like, what What could I do next that would be challenging? I was like, you know what? I'm going to work on a five-foot drawing. And when I did an Australia con like six years ago, five years ago, six years, it's been a while, there was an artist that I met there, and he really challenged me. He's like, you know, you're pretty good, but I think you could be great. And I was like, well, <laughs> and me being like, wow, that was really blunt. But I realized people in Australia, they don't, they cut to the chase. They don't, they don't sugarcoat things, which I kind of appreciate, uh, to be honest. Uh, but he was talking about how uh, I need to challenge myself if I really want to stand out amongst the crowd. And even back then, he was like, why don't you work bigger? He was like, have you ever thought about doing a two foot drawing? And it was like, uh, no, uh, I mean, I guess I haven't really given it much, con much consideration. He's like, my next challenge for you is to do a two-foot drawing. And that next year, I did my first two-foot drawing, which is now Ascension, and that is my giant tree-walking piece. But before I ended the conversation with him, he was like, you know, you always have to think bigger. Oh, well, thank you, Josh. Oh, there's, so, no, there's no prints left, so I quickly just drew one up quick. <laughs> All 300 plus hands. There wow. Yeah, you so definitely my... you need to get better. <laughs> <laughs> So this is, well, thank you, Josh. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So this is my collector piece, and this is the one that I have just over 300 hands, but it was great because people that were following me on Twitch at the time, they would watch, and then they would submit pictures of their own hand, and then I would include them in this drawing. So there's a lot of pictures of my family member, my friends, my community. They're all in this, and this still is one of my favorite pieces that I've done on a technical level because I really challenged myself to do something that I knew would take me a while. This is my longest piece to date. And I know I'm totally rambling right now, but just bear with me if you're, you're still, still hanging in there. Uh, and when I was talking to this guy in Australia, he said, you know, even though this two-foot drawing is great, why not work on a 10-foot wall? And I was like, oh, that, I would never do that. He's like, well, why? And then as I was starting to t explain myself, I realized I was just listing excuses and he stopped me halfway through and he's like, you do realize none of those points are valid. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this guy's like grilling me right now. Uh, but I was like, what do you mean? He's like, all of those uh, reasons why you can't do this drawing aren't reasons. They're excuses for you to validate not doing them. And it that this guy, I don't think he realized how much he affected me because he was right. He was right about everything. And I, I was making excuses. So from that point forward, I never say excuses anymore for why I can't draw something. Instead, I say I'm not prioritizing it because I'm taking ownership of the fact that I'm either being lazy or I'm not utilizing my time well to get these projects done. So coming back to the, the point of why I'm even telling this. So I am currently working on a five foot drawing. It has a thousand fish in it. It'll have a hundred mermaids. It'll be this underwater utopia. It's gonna take me forever to finish this. But I started it and I'm about 15 hours, 15 to 20 hours deep in it right now. And it's barely like 100% done. Uh, but what I was doing for the longest time 
is every day I would just work an hour on it. I would time myself, I would set a timer. I have a playlist specifically meant for this drawing. Actually, you know what, I can share my playlist. <laughs> I've had uh, some other people ask me, what do I listen to when I draw? Specifically when I'm drawing this piece, I have a playlist. I don't want it to start playing though because I don't want to get flagged on YouTube. There we go, let's copy paste it. Okay, so here is the playlist. So that's my underwater utopia, definitely like Bioshocky uh, playlist. Anyways, this is something that I I get frustrated with often, all the time. I even had to buy magnifying glasses to help me draw because it's so small. And uh, there are days where I don't want to work on this, or I don't want to work on that. And uh, I mean, like now everything's on pause because I have to get this card deck done, so I can't be working on things. Well, I guess I could. I'm just not prioritizing it. See, I almost, I almost made an excuse again. I'm not prioritizing it. Anyways, uh, but when I was in my prime, when I was like the most proud of myself, I have eight things every day where I work on them for, or seven that I work on for hour spurts. And then in between the hours, I take a five minute break. So my five foot drawing was something that I work on for one of those seven slots. And then when that timer is up, I stretch, I get up, I go to the bathroom, I go eat, whatever it might be, come back. What's the next thing on my hour list? Restart the timer, put on the new playlist, and then go on that next thing. And that really helped me manage having a bunch of things on the back burner because then when I get up during the break, I'm shifting my mindset on, uh, I'm not thinking about what I was just working on anymore. I am now starting to prioritize what I'm about to be working on. And that really, really worked for me. So eventually when these card decks, or this card deck is done, I'm gonna go back to that because I saw the most improvement and things getting done with my sword playbook, with my other projects, with my other underwater piece. And it helps me manage all these ideas that I have in my head that I want to get out, but I don't prioritize uh, working on them um, at the same time well. Or at least I started, I found a little gem of how to do it, but I need to get back to that. And for those of you who want to see the underwater drawing, you can join my Patreon. There should be a link in the description, and you can see what it looks like right now. I believe I have like like I have 20 plus images on the discord channel where you can see all my close-up shots of how I'm working on it I do a lot of like before and after my hour segment so you can see before the hour I wanted to draw a turtle and a mermaid here this is what I looked like after the hour anyways that was a really long ramble I am sorry that 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 took that many that long for me to explain uh, Kyle says, I love having friends around while I work, so your streams are great at simulating that, though I often tune out when I'm in the zone. I That's literally what these streams are kind of meant for. I like zoning into my own world. I usually have music on in the background, but it's the same type of thing where I like that white noise to just keep my mind busy, and it helps me stay focused. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm caught up. So for the last 15 minutes, if you have any final questions, I'll go ahead and answer those because I'm going to stream for about 15 more minutes. I'm going to cut this off. So I'm going to try to really shade here. I feel like I rambled for a, a while. I think I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm just excited today. It's just been a really good day. I, I want to share that with you guys. I hope everyone's having a pretty great Friday right now. Because I'm having a great Friday. And I want I want to share that. So even for like a lot of these petals, I'm gonna do a very soft render. I want there to be a lot of harsh contrast because I'm saving that for the club and the spade cards. You know what? That's what I am going to do. 
the Jack of Clubs on either Tuesday or Thursday. And then next Wednesday, I'll do a Let's Draw together, and we'll do a, a drawing tutorial together, or a hand, how to draw a hand tutorial together. And I'll kind of share my thoughts on how to draw hands better and what you can do in the future. Because I think it would be easier to have Josh helping me mod a stream like that rather than doing another card like this. Because I can easily do a stream where I draw uh, the card and manage doing the comments as well. So usually under the eyebrow, I make it a little darker. To add quote unquote age to a character, I usually just focus on the wrinkles, especially around the eyes and the mouth area, just to make them feel a bit older. Now I'm not gonna actually share the final king when I finish this until the actual Kickstarter. So you guys are getting like an inside uh, glimpse at to what the final will look like. Cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep all my kings a secret until the Kickstarter launches. And then every, I think it's like every four days I'll, re I'll release the new king and you guys can see what he looks like. Cause I think having some level of mystery behind things is still kind of fun. I think that's kind of missing in um, Instagram culture is everything needs to be like, no, 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 no. It's a gratification. But I think having a little level of mystery and patience and suspension can um, add a little bit more fun to these times. You know what? I'm going to keep his beard more light. I thought I was going to make it a bit darker, but I'm going to keep it lighter. There we go. Oh, and I guess I should also mention the little polls below. The first one is when we hit 30 members. I'm gonna do an exclusive member only stream. So that's for everyone that joins me here on YouTube. So it's $2 to join. And then you get the custom emojis though too. Uh, but I'm gonna do an exclusive stream just for the members. And then the one below that, when we get 200 subscribers, so we're already past halfway, which is nuts. Uh, I'm gonna get a Let's Play stream going. I, I don't know what game I'll be playing. I was talking to Josh. I, I would want to do League of Legends because that's the game I play the most. But with League, for any of you that have played League of Legends, it can either go really bad or really good. And it's such a roll of the dice that I would feel so awkward if I had played League. And then if, especially if I did bad, oh, I'm sure I would never hear the end of it. I would like take that video off of YouTube because <laughs> I don't want people thinking I'm just like the worst League player ever. Um, but other options would be like Mario Kart or uh, I love Pikmin or hell, even uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake when that comes out. So who knows? I don't know what I'll be playing, but that is what that goal is for. And for those who donate, there is a donation link in the description. I'm going to be buying a planter and a bunch of seeds that I can put behind me, probably on that shelf there, that you guys can see the plants keep growing through every stream. So even like the three beans, you can see how they're actually growing pretty tall now. Where two days ago, you couldn't even see the third one. And I think it would be cool just to have something in the background. And I think I might even do a stream where I'm planting the actual plants too. You know, just some fun little background noise. I think I'm just gonna call myself that from now on. I'm just like the king of background noise. You can turn me on, but you don't even have to listen. Oh, that sounded bad. <laughs> uh, maybe let's not use that as the tagline for my streams. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um. What champs do you play? I used to main Garen completely, but then when I first played the game, and this is like seven years ago, 
uh, actually like eight years ago, uh, Timo was my main for the longest time. But as of right now, Mundo is my main, followed by Zig's support. Those are my those are my boys right now. Uh, Simon says, I want you to stream League so bad. We have experienced some bad games. It needs to be documented to the world, LOL. I mean, we had a great one last night, though. Uh, sometimes when I have a really good League night, it like, pumps me up, and I'm like, I can, I can do anything. But when I have a bad League night, I'm like, I am awful. I thought I was good at things. Not anymore. League is the only game that can still get under my skin because I think it, I'm so competitive deep down, but I've learned how to contain it. And I'm no longer, uh, I used to like really take it out on myself, but now I just get kind of quiet, especially when I know I did bad in League and if it was my fault, I just get kind of quiet. So if I do stream it, I'm going to just go in being like, you know what, even if we do horrible, even if my match, if I get paired with people that may not be the best, I'm just going to make the most of it. We're going to joke the whole time and not take it seriously because I think that's the best way to play League is to not take it seriously. And I have to remind myself that. Which I feel like a video game, you shouldn't have to tell yourself that. Like, okay, remember, this is just a game. But for whatever reason, League of Legends, it, it does that to me. <laughs> oh my god, same stop. Yeah? Oh, Corey, you used to play? I had no idea. Or maybe if you did mention it, we like collectively was like, let's just pretend like we didn't play League and didn't, don't admit it out loud. <laughs> but I, I also don't want to get like my own gaming channel because I think I would be too focused on that rather than drawing. And drawing will always be my first and foremost love. So I'm going to leave the, the gaming streams to my boyfriend, Josh. But then I'll do one periodically, kind of like whenever we hit this first goal. I mean, I almost think it would be fun to do a game where people can join in. So like if I did Mario Kart, I think it would be fun to like race against me and be like, oh, hey, let's first each other in Mario Kart community. So I don't know. We'll see. I'm still still deciding on that one. I can just tell my mind wants to outline things rather than shade. Because whenever I go into autopilot mode, my mind immediately goes into wanting to outline things. Which is fine, but I can tell that, at least for this stream, I hope I did a good job at kind of showing the outlining process and then some of the rendering so you guys can get kind of a glimpse at how my, uh, how my process goes. Ooh, that, that is horrible. Hold on. <laughs> this is sometimes my issue when I draw one side of the, I'm I'm sure all of you feel this, that uh, do art. When you draw one eye that you, you feel pretty good about, and then you go to the other eye, and you're like, this looks awful. <laughs> How did I make one side look so good, and then the other side looks like absolute trash? Oh, I do not like that at all. Okay, I'm going to do some tight rendering to end it off but we got like 7 minutes left so if you have any last minute questions ask them now and I will go ahead and do my best to answer them without rambling too much um, Simon says we did we did a good league match legit makes you want to run the world <laughs> true <laughs> Um, also, Simon says, it's okay, we can play together. My insane, non-tilting attitude will hold us up. You are, yeah, you're very good at that. I think you're inspiring me and Josh to remember that it's just League of Legends. <laughs> I feel like we shouldn't have to remind ourselves that, but me and Josh definitely get really into it. So it was, it's really fun playing with you and fun playing with someone that can openly be like, it. I am untiltable, I'll never get angry at this game. So it's, it's been a lot of fun playing with you, Simon. Corey says, I was not good. <laughs> no one's good at League of Legends, let's be honest. 
Simon says, everyone I tell that I don't get tilted to league thinks I'm insane. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I still think you're crazy. I'm like waiting for the match where I see you break, but it hasn't happened yet. And we've already had some really, really rough games. Okay, I'm going to do some tighter rendering around the eye and the nose. I, I think I need to be pulling up some references of some old, older uh, men that have kind of more defined wrinkles around their face area, just so I can get a better feel of how I can make him look a bit older here. Um, Books Dust says, do you ever do the hand movement for zooming in while drawing traditionally? Yes, I do this. All, uh, not all the time, but I catch myself and I'm like, Tim, <laughs> what are you doing? What are you, tr what are you trying to do right now, Tim? Uh, where was I? Oh, Simon says, lol, I'm sure I'll break at some point, maybe. I don't know. You seem pretty adamant that you are untiltable. You gotta, you gotta hold by that standard. You're the one that gave you that title. Now you gotta live by it. Sketchios, will you support Zig my ADC gen? Yeah, I I feel pretty good about my support Zigs. I mean, when me and Josh play bot with Zig and Ezreal, we do we usually do a pretty good job. I think it's when we fight uh, teams that have a Twitch or any champion that goes invisible or very jumpy. Sometimes that's where I think we, we struggle a little bit, but yeah, I, I find that I really enjoy working Twitch support, or uh, Zig support. Um, how do you not manage to smudge it with your hand though? So you can see how technically my hand's lying on like this area, but you can see there is a little bit of smudge. So I'm always cleaning my hand and I'm always erasing the area that I smudged. So I'm, I'm a very clean, quote unquote, clean artist in the fact that I'm always cleaning up my, my drawing surface. There we go. All right, I like where this is going. I mean, I, I kind of, was excited to draw this a few days ago because I just I had a good feeling about it, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm liking where it's going. So I want to thank you all for coming to this live stream. I know. Uh, oh, wait. Let me move that out of the way. Hold on. There we go. Yeah. Thanks everyone for coming to this live stream. My next one will be on Monday. I'm technically going to be on the stream of my boyfriend Josh's swap, Schwa plays games tomorrow night, so we'll be playing Animal Crossing. So if you want to come join that and hang out, we're just going to be having a good time and probably just chattering the whole time. Uh, but you can come join to that there. I'm sure, if Josh, if you're watching, if you could put a link to your YouTube below. And Monday, we'll start off my streaming week again. So Monday, I'm going to be doing the gold leafing. Tuesday, I'll probably be doing the Jack of Clubs. Wednesday, I'm going to be a draw. Uh, with me, so we're going to do a hand tutorial together, and I'll share my tips on how to draw hands better. And then Friday, I'm going to be doing the duo stream with Babs Webb. So I have a full week next week if you want to come and listen to some background noise. <laughs> Thank you guys again for joining the stream, and until next time, take care, and have a really great weekend, because it is a tough time right now, but we're getting through it together. Stay positive and be kind to one another. All right. That's all I got. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, 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 bye.